This is Central Leader Crawford. I ask you to lend me your ears. Though Dark Falls has been defeated, our war against the Dolls rages on. And now, a new enemy has appeared. The Starless. Offer me your strength, and we will bring peace to Alpha. Thank you all for coming. Today, I'd like to discuss our surveys of Halfa's various regions. Specifically, how we might better leverage them against the Dolls and the Starless. A fine idea. But every team needs a leader, yes? Who will that be? Manon. Yes, I guess you could say that. Unfortunately, I'll need you two to focus on your own duties. What? Uh, but... I'll need you to lean into your role as our guardian against the Starless. And Ina, I'll need you to look after our new trainees. <laughs> then I'll do it. I'll lead that research team. We'll decide the particulars of an action plan later. You came at just the right time. Do you have a minute to talk? Faria here was just telling me more about the Starless. So far, it's been familiar information. But any scrap of info at this point helps a great deal. I thought it might be a good idea to share it with you, our Guardian. Is there anything in particular you would like to know about the Starless? They suddenly appeared, from outside of human space, seemingly from nowhere. And then, they began attacking, seemingly without reason. That was 500 years ago now. Sadly, humans at the time were no match for them. And those on the periphery were, suffice it to say, many lives were lost in the remote star systems. Right, but the inner regions were mostly left untouched. There wasn't exactly a fight, per se. After the Starless destroyed the Border Star systems, they began to expand their offensive, even farther afield. Until one day, they suddenly disappeared. Something must have happened that caused them to withdraw. People at the time thought that too. A subsequent investigation found no evidence of a withdrawal. And there was no indication at all 
that they were hiding somewhere. It seems as though the Starless simply vanished without a trace. Regardless, the fact remains that they attacked without warning and killed billions of people. Some people saw that as reason enough to take action. And so, Resurgent Arcs was formed. But that's a long story, in and of itself. Why don't we take a little break for now? We can continue again, when you're ready. Let's get started then. People were traumatized by the Starless attack 500 years ago. Some of those people formed what would go on to become Resurgent Arcs. That much we've covered already, right? Can you continue, Feria? Yes. Resistance to the Starless threat developed and manifested in various ways. Zephetto was part of one such resistance movement. He had also participated in the war against the Starless. Zephetto was concerned about the decline in military capability and photon power at the time. A great war had taken place 1,000 years prior, with a long period of peace afterward. And it is believed that photon power declined because people no longer needed to fight. Additionally, without an enemy, there's no need for much of a military. Zephetto began to study the most powerful unit in that ancient Great War to see if he could find some way to counter the Starless. That unit was Arx. His goal was to restore it to its former power. And so began Resurgent Arx. Zephetto claimed that the odds of the Starless reappearing in the next 500 years were high. He boasted that Arx was uniquely suited to counter the Starless threat. Resurgent Arx became a rallying point for people who shared such sentiments. His research was obsessively focused on the Starless's movement patterns. There are significant space-time fluctuations which occur at certain intervals. Among them, some are large, and others are small. The one 500 years ago was small. He predicted that a major fluctuation would occur 500 years after that. And that brings us to the current emergence of the Starless. The exact causal relationship between these two events is not well understood. Or at least, not by the Lasilans anyway. I do not know any more than that. We had no interest in these sorts of matters. Um, before now, that is. Meaning Zephetto didn't make a point of it. Or perhaps deliberately wanted to hide it. We may find more answers in Lucille's core. <sighs> Can I trust you to continue helping us with our investigation, Faria? Yes. Manon! Aina! And you, too. Oh, I'm so glad we finally found you. Yeah. So, uh, what's with the outfit? Crawford gave it to me. And the old one was from Resurgent Arc, so... Ah, uh, gotcha. Huh? Y you mean it? Hmm... I like the old one, but this one's pretty nice too. Thank you. Are you free right now? We've got so much to talk about. I guess we do. But I can't right now. Glenn wants to talk to me about the new research team we're forming. Oh, uh, right. We volunteered to help out with that too, but he wouldn't let us. 
You two have your own duties to attend to, right? It's probably best if you focus on those. Uh, okay. But, Manon, will you be alright by yourself? Y yeah. I guess so. Something on my mind? Mm. I'm just afraid to face everyone. What I did to the people of Helfa was absolutely unpardonable. Don't say that. It wasn't your fault. Everyone still considers you a friend. Even if that's true, it doesn't change what I did. I don't know if I can ever make up for it, or what to do with all my guilt. I know, but I can't help it. There you are, man. Glenn, I'm sorry. I'll get going. You know where it is? Yeah. Hey, Glenn. Is she always like this lately? I think she's still trying to feel the situation out. Some people still don't trust her, you know? But... what about all she's done for Alpha? Way ahead of you on that one. Look, I have my own feelings on the matter. But I can't deny how much you three have helped. I'll take care of everything. Don't worry. I just hope she doesn't bottle everything up like she always does. I know Glenn said not to worry, but I think we should check in sometimes. I know you care about her too.
Honestly, I haven't done anything special. Really. Well, that was a little much. Oh, when did you get here? I guess she's a new recruit. She was having trouble with some dolls, so I helped her out a little. And then she started fawning all over me. If somehow I can even start to make up for it, I need to do whatever I can. Anyway, I better get going. I need to meet up with a research team member. I'll see you later. Do you have a moment? Remember our talk about Ina becoming a training instructor? Well, she agreed. She'll be part of our new training corps. This is a first for her, so I'm sure she's nervous. I hope you'll be there for her, if she needs any help. I'm counting on you.
Hey, there you are. Yeah, our research is coming along little by little. We were just talking about it. Why don't you join our conversation? Feria was talking about it before. Alpha is controlled from Lucille. I mean, they were even controlling the weather from there. Wind, rain, snow. All of it was being manipulated. Right down to the temperature and humidity. I can't believe they had that level of control. Right? I'm shocked too. The Lucilans shared some new information with us. There's a place in Lucille's core that only Zephetto can enter. If we can get in there, we can get all the info we still don't have. About the Starless and stuff. That would be great. Do we know of some way to get in? Unfortunately... The teleporter we used before is still down. But we did find another way to get inside Lucille. Nice. We put together a scout team right away and they tried going. But there was some strange space in the way. Sorry, what? We're still not exactly sure what to make of it. It seems like it was being used as a testing ground before Halfa was created. Or at least the remnants of it did. And it was really dangerous. There were a lot of enemies. It looks like it might not be so easy to get to the core. We're investigating the area and trying to figure out how to deal with it. Interesting. Be sure to keep us posted. You bet. I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs>